This is a fairly classic and common problem for Lagrangian mechanics. And it's pretty fun too, so let's just go ahead and do it. So this is a bead on a spinning hoop. So I made a little prop here um, that may, may help us, but it may not. So imagine this CD is a, a wire, and then I have this bead that can slide up and down. And so this is the Y direction. And then this is, it's gonna spin like this. That makes sense? Okay, so that's that. So I don't know, is the picture better? I don't know, well, anyway. So in this situation, the very first thing that we wanna think about is how many degrees of freedom do we have? And in, and in fact, the answer is just one. Um, although this bead can move in three dimensions, it's confined along this two-dimensional circle. So that really gives it, that takes away two degrees of freedom and then you're left with just one. And, and you may think, oh, but the, the, it's spinning. Well, but that spinning is set. It's not a variable, right? It's set. If we know the angular velocity, I know the angle that it rotates at, it's just omega t. So really, all I need is this variable theta and I can describe the whole system, which is, makes it really nice for Lagrangian. Um, because now I can just say Lagrangian is kinetic energy minus potential energy, and then the Euler-Lagrange equation says the partial of L with respect to one of the variables, which I only have one, minus the time derivative of the partial of L with respect to the derivative of that variable, qi dot, we define dot notation with derivative with respect to time, is equal to zero, so we can get an equation of motion from the Euler-Lagrange equation. Now, the, the, the problem here is kinetic energy, right? How do I get the kinetic energy of this? How do I get the potential? I, I would admit, a lot of books just say, oh, it's just simple. Can't you see it's rotating? So it has rotational kinetic energy um, and it can rotate this way. So that's another kind of rotational kinetic energy. I mean, I get that. Uh, that's not wrong. Uh, I just think that it's not complete. I like to do it from scratch. So I'm going to do it from scratch uh, in case you don't have, you don't have to rely on some intuition trick to see what that is. So the best way to find the kinetic energy, there should be a parenthesis right there, is to use Cartesian coordinates. Because in Cartesian coordinates, I know that the velocity is x dot squared plus y dot squared plus z dot squared. And I know the potential energy is mgy. So with that, if I can get the position of this x, y, and z in terms of theta and omega, then I can, and r, the radius of the disk, then I can, I have a much better time. Okay, so let's start with our Cartesian coordinates. You may think, hey, this is a lot like spherical coordinates, and you are correct. Um, it's not spherical coordinates because we have uh, this rotation in the y-axis. If it was z-axis, you could do, it'd be a little bit easier. Um, but, and also we're measuring from the y-axis uh, for this angle. Oh, no, that'd be okay. So other than that, it, it mostly is. So let's look at this as the origin right here. And that's the y-axis. So the first thing is to find this y-value. The y-value, it doesn't really matter how this disk is rotated. It's always going to be this projection onto the y-axis such that y is going to be negative r cosine theta, right? Okay, now what about uh, the x and z coordinates? So this is x. Z comes out of the paper. Um, so if I project this into the x, y, x, z plane, then that projection in there is going to be equal to, uh, uh, this is going to be, I'll say, r sine theta. That's that projection. But that this disk can rotate, right? So the angle between the x-axis and uh, this projection is omega t, right? Because that... Uh, angle increases with time. So my x coordinate is going to be that projection, r sine theta, and then I have to multiply by cosine omega t. And let's just check, right? If I have it starting in the plane at t equals zero, then this is going to be one, and I will get r sine theta. So it really works. And then my z coordinate is just going to be the same projection, r sine theta, but sine omega t. And then so there I have, I have my three coordinates. Now what I can do is I can take derivatives, right? So let's take uh, the derivatives of these with respect to time, square them, and put them in here. So I'm going to actually uh, rewrite these up here. So let's just say y equals negative r cosine theta, x equals r sine theta cosine omega t, uh, z equals r sine theta, sine 
omega t. Okay, let's start with y dot. So y dot is going to be the derivative of this with respect to time. So r is a constant here, so the derivative of r is 0. So I only have to worry about the cosine theta. So the derivative of cosine theta is sine theta, negative sine theta, so I'm going to get r sine theta, but then I have to take the derivative of the inside of that, so the derivative of theta with respect to time is theta dot. So I get theta dot sine theta. That's pretty easy. Now let's do x. Um, I'm going to do it right down. No, I'll have room. x dot is going to be equal to, now I have a product here, right? I have a sine theta term and a cosine omega t term. The derivative of r sine theta is going to be equal to r theta dot cosine theta, and then I have to multiply by this, cosine omega t, and then I have to do this, so I'm going to treat that thing as constant, so I'm going to say uh, it's actually going to be minus, because I'm taking the derivative of cosine, so minus r omega, because I'm taking the derivative of the inside of this, sine, I did it backwards, because I knew what the answer was, right, sine omega t. So I take the derivative of cosine omega t, I get sine, negative sine omega t, that's where the negative comes from. And then I have to take the derivative of omega t with respect to t, which is omega. y dot. Uh, so again, I'm going to get uh, r theta dot cosine theta sine omega t, and then I'm going to get plus r omega cosine cosine theta, no, sine, yeah, sine theta, now I'm going to take the derivative of this, I get cosine omega t, okay, had a little meltdown there, that's fine. y dot squared is easy, let's do that one first, y dot squared is going to be R, why are we doing squared? Because we're putting it into the kinetic energy. Uh, R theta dot, R squared theta dot squared sine squared theta. Now these two, this is Z. <laughs> I'm really having trouble today. Okay. So let's square this one. X dot squared is going to be this term squared. R squared theta dot squared cosine squared theta cosine squared omega t. Now I'm going to get this times that, two of them, right? So that's going to be minus 2 r squared theta dot omega cosine theta sine theta cosine omega t sine omega t. And then I'm going to get this squared plus r squared omega squared sine squared theta sine squared omega t. I mean, that looks messy, but it's just straight eighth grade algebra, right? I'm just, I'm just factor, I'm just, what's it called? Foiling. I'm foiling that out. Now let's do the z dot squared. It's going to look similar. So I have this term squared. So I get r squared theta dot squared cosine squared theta sine squared omega t, and then I'm going to get two of these terms, but they're going to be plus because they're both positive. So plus 2 r squared theta dot omega uh, cosine theta sine theta cosine omega t sine omega t. And then I'm going to get this squared, so it's going to be plus r squared omega squared sine squared theta cosine squared omega t. Okay, now we have some awesome things happen here by coincidence. So, not coincidence. This term is the exact opposite of this term, so they cancel. When I add these two together, let's just do x squared plus uh, x dot squared plus z dot squared. If I add these two, they're going to cancel. Right here, I'm going to get, you notice they both have a r squared omega squared sine squared theta. So I can factor that out and I'm left with a sine squared omega t plus cosine omega t which is equal to 1. Just a note. Cosine squared omega t plus sine squared omega t equals 1. So that means I just get r squared omega squared sine squared theta. And then over here I have the same thing happens for cosine squared factored out with r squared theta dot squared and I get also a sine 
square plus cosine squared is 1. Uh, so that, let's just write that out and get one more thing. So r squared theta dot squared cosine squared theta. Yeah. Plus, yeah, r squared omega squared sine squared theta. I'm just checking my notes to see if I got that right. Yeah. I think some, I thought that for some reason I thought they canceled these factored out. Should be, did I make a mistake? R dot, let's double check. R dot cosine 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 sine 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 cosine so when I square this that's fine when I square the other one yeah and then the omega t's go out the omega t's go out right there okay I feel like let me just check my notes because I feel like the kinetic energy term would be a little bit simpler I did it before and I don't want to make a mistake Okay, I'm just going to proceed. I might have a mistake in there. but So now I can write the total kinetic energy as 1 half m. No, I think I can. That's right. I know what I'm doing now. Okay. 1 half m, I have uh, y dot squared this. It's going to be r squared theta dot squared sine squared theta plus this term plus r squared theta dot squared cosine squared theta plus that term plus r squared omega squared sine squared theta, that's right, okay. And so right here, I can factor out an r squared theta dot squared, and I get sine squared plus cosine squared. So now I get t is 1 half m r squared theta dot squared plus r squared omega squared sine squared theta. And, and this actually makes sense, right? This is the velocity, the angular, the kinetic energy due to the velocity moving up and down the ring. And this, it's going to move in a circle of radius r sine theta. And if I multiply that by omega, I get this is the, the, the kinetic energy going around. So, so I have two kinetic energies. Here's my disk. It's, it's spinning around this. So I have a kinetic energy moving up and down the disk and one moving around a circle. And, and this is r sine theta is the radius of that circle. And, and that's the way you'd plausibly do it. You say, I don't have to worry about all these Cartesian coordinate stuff. I'm just going to think about it. And, and if you do that, that's cool. Um, I just don't want to do that. Okay. So now I have uh, the kinetic energy. The potential energy is just mgy, and I have y. So now I can write my total Lagrangian. Let's just write that right here. Oh, my board's slipping. Uh, L is 1 half m r squared theta dot squared plus r squared omega squared sine squared theta minus uh, mgy, but, but y is negative r cosine theta, right? So I'm going to get plus mgr cosine theta. And that's my Lagrangian. Now I can use the Euler-Lagrange equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the partial of L with respect to theta. So let's look in here. Where is there a theta term? My paper's crooked. It's bothering me. Okay. Straight paper. Okay, there we go. So no, no, there's a theta term right there, right? So I'm going to take, this is a power rule because I have sine squared. So I'm going to bring the 2 down, but I have to multiply it by the 1 half m. So I get m times r squared omega squared sine theta. But then I have to take the derivative of sine theta with respect to theta, which is going to be cosine theta. And then you have to take the derivative of theta with respect to theta, because it's a partial, which is just 1. Okay, so that's that term. Now right here, I have an mgr cosine theta, so I have to take the derivative of that, and I'm going to get negative mgr sine theta. Okay, next I'm going to take the partial of L with respect to theta dot. And there's a theta dot right there. That's the only one. So if I use the power rule again, I have the 2. I bring it down, multiply it by 1 half. I get m r squared 
theta dot. Now I need to take the derivative, derivative of this with respect to time, d dt, the partial of L with respect to theta dot. Uh, the only thing that changes in time here is theta dot. So the derivative of theta dot with respect to time is theta double dot. So I get m r squared theta double dot. So the Euler-Lagrange equation, partial of L with respect to theta, now partial of L with respect to theta minus d dt, partial of L with respect to theta dot is equal to zero. So I have this term, I have this term, and since they're subtracted and they equal zero, that means that this term is equal to that. So I'm just gonna say m r squared theta double dot equals m r squared omega squared, my omegas look like w's and that's my fault, sine theta cosine theta minus mg r sine theta. I want to solve this for theta double dot. So I'm gonna divide both sides by mr squared and I get theta double dot equals, I have mr squared, mr squared. So it's gonna be omega squared sine theta cosine theta. And this is gonna be minus the m's cancel. One of the r's cancels g over r sine theta. So that's my differential equation. That's actually the, I'm really done with the physics. Now the question is how could I solve this second order differential equation? Uh, and I'm not going to do it that way. I'm gonna solve it a different way. You know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna solve this with Python because I'm gonna model the whole thing. So if you haven't seen any of my videos before, uh, if I say delta t equals 0 0.01 seconds, and I break this into time steps, and I calculate my, my angular velocity, my angular acceleration theta double dot using this equation with initial conditions. And I can assume that theta double dot is constant over that time interval. And if that's true, then I can write the following. Theta double dot is the change in theta dot with respect to time. And that's gonna be theta two dot minus theta one dot over delta t. And that's assume this, it's, I'm making this assumption because I have a short time interval. And I can make that as short or as long as I want. So from this, I can calculate theta two dot equals theta one dot plus theta double dot delta t. So this says that if I know the theta one dot at the beginning of the time interval, if I calculate theta double dot using this, then I can find theta two at the end of the time interval. I can do the same thing for assuming theta two dot is constant. Theta two dot is change in theta with respect to time, which is theta two minus theta one over delta t. So theta two equals theta one plus theta two dot delta t. So this is important. It's a box in a box, look at that. That's a dot, I missed my dot. And another one. So now if I know that the, the angle at the beginning I can, of the time interval, I can find the angle at the end of the time interval. Now I can go to the next time interval where I have new thetas, right? So I can plug in my new thetas, get a new theta double dot, get a new theta two dot, get a new theta two, and then just keep doing that forever. And that's what we're gonna do in Python. And then I'm gonna come back and look at some special cases. So we've got a lot of work to do in Python, but that would never stop us before. So I'm just gonna do it. Uh, I actually started the, the program a little bit, not much, but let's jump over to Python. I'm gonna give you the code um, and we'll work through this. It's gonna be great. Okay, let's see, I need to make this a little bit bigger. That should be big enough. So this is Web v Python. Um, GlowScript is another name for it. Uh, it's, it's a online Python implementation with 3D objects. So I've already started here and I made, so the nice thing about this is that we can create, um, we can create th these 3D objects. So I've already made the hoop and I'm, I'm calling it a wire. It's a ring, I gave it a position, I gave it an axis. I get, let's, give, let's call this R equals uh, 0 0.3 and I'll put this as R because I'm gonna need that variable R. Uh, the thickness is just how thick it is. 
Uh, then I have my angular velocity omega. I have my time, my time step. And all this does is, is create that ring and then rotate it at a constant angular velocity. Um, I think, yeah, I think that's right. And, there, and so the camera zooms out a little bit just to make sure it can fit. And then it's just a rotating ring. That's all we need to do. So I already made that part. Now let's go ahead and make the bead. So if we do that, we need to add some other things in here. Um, I don't actually need the mass. It doesn't show up in the calculation. I do need G, 9.8. Uh, I need my initial theta. Theta is, let's say, 30 degrees times pi divided by 180. Uh, I need a theta dot. I mean, my initial velocity. So I'm going to start with that at zero. Um, that's it. OK. So now I'm going to go ahead and calculate uh, my x, y, and z values for that bead using the same translation I had on the paper. So I'm going to say y equals negative r. My, my ring is centered at the origin. r times cosine theta. Uh, x equals r times sine theta. Theta times, oh, let's put this, let's co copy this, cut this. I just realized I'm going to use omega t here. Uh, t is zero. So uh, this is going to be cosine omega t. And then z is r times sine theta times sine omega t. So now I can make my bead. I'm going to call it a bead. It's an object. It's going to be a sphere. Its position is going to be equal to the vector. This is nice. x, y, z. Right? I just calculated those. Uh, its radius is let's see so the thickness let's put 0 0.01 let's make it yellow let's make it uh, make trail equals true um yeah and then let's just see if i can make sure that it rotates around so if i just copy this data's oh, omega t is going to change so if i put this down here and i want a just a bead rotating on a wire to make sure it works uh, and then I can say bead, oops, bead.pos equals uh, the same thing, vector x, y, z. Why am I copying this? I could type that faster than I can copy it. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, nice. So there's my bead. I didn't calculate my Euler-Lagrange equations or anything. I just want to make sure I got my rotations right. That actually looks pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, let's make that a little bit bigger. Um, let's make this 0.2. Does that look bigger? That looks good. Okay. So now what I want to do is to calculate theta double dot. So in my loop down here, uh, I'm actually going to change my values for theta, and, but I need to calculate theta double dot. So this up here, this wire, that's going to move. That's set. Okay. It, I don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to say theta dd dot equals. Uh, now I'm just going to look at my Euler, my equation over here. I have omega squared times sine theta times cosine theta minus g times sine theta divided by r. So once I have theta double dot, I can calculate theta dot at the end of the time interval. So I'm going to say theta dot equals theta dot plus theta double dot times ut. Now I can update theta. Theta equals theta plus theta dot times dt. That's it. Right? That's it. This should work now. So now I'm changing the value of theta each time based on theta double dot. And let's just see if this works. I'll be pretty happy because I didn't actually test it beforehand. That looks like it's working. It's actually uh, beautiful. Okay. So now we can do a whole bunch of things. You know, I can change the starting angle. Let's change this to uh, 50 degrees and run it and so the, the beads looping back up and down. You know, we can do a whole bunch of things like this. Let's do the first thing to check. What if, what if the angular velocity of the hoop is zero? Then the bead just slides back and forth. It should be like a pendulum, right? Uh, and I could calculate that, but let's just go up here and say W times zero. So now it's just swinging back and forth, okay? Uh, we could calculate the period. It, it's not easy because it's not less than 15 degrees. But I could plot the position of that as a function of time, and, and it is a pendulum. 
if you look at the at the equation, if I if I said omega equals zero, I get the equation for a pendulum. So um, let's look at two other special cases. So let's go back to the paper, and then I'll, I'll model those two cases, and then um, then that'll be it. Okay, overhead, that's right here. Okay, so back to the paper. Here's what happens, right? If I set omega equal to zero, so that the hoop doesn't rotate, this term is zero, so I get theta double dot is negative g over r sine theta. So let's see, let's put that omega equals zero, theta double dot is omega, oh no, it's just gonna be negative g over r sine theta. And then if theta is uh, much less than, it was small, what's the signal for small? If theta is very small, then sine of theta is approximately equal to theta. So I get theta double dot equals negative g over r theta. And that is the equation for a simple harmonic motion, right? If I have x double dot is negative k over m x. So you do get a uh, simple harmonic motion, which, which you already knew that. Okay, let's write down our equation that we're gonna look at. Theta double dot equals omega squared sine, sine theta cosine theta minus g over r sine theta. So that's my differential equation. Now, let's look at the hoop right here. What if I start right here and it's rotating? What if theta starts at zero? If, if this is spinning and I put theta right there, it should just stay there, right? Because uh, if you think of it in terms of centrifugal forces, there's a centrifugal force if it's off the axis, but if it's on the axis, there's not. So if I put in theta is equal to zero, this term becomes zero, because I have sine of zero times one is zero. This term is also zero. So that if I have theta double dot equals zero and, and theta dot equals theta one dot, the initial velocity is zero, then the new velocity, theta two dot, it's also gonna be zero. So it's not gonna move, right? It's gonna stay there. So if I put that down at the bottom with my calculation, it should stay there. Let's just check that out real quick. Oh, my stool moved, okay. So if I go up here to theta equals zero, so all I have to do is multiply this by zero. Zero times, and I run it. Oh, I have an omega equals zero too. Uh, so let's take that out. And you'll notice the B just stays there. It just stays in the middle. It looks like it moves just because I think the, the way that the parrot, there's like a parallax thing with the a perspective thing with that. Okay, so that worked. Now there's another special case that we can get on each switch back to. There's another special case. Imagine this is rotating at some angular velocity and I have some angle theta. It's possible that I can have the mass uh, start over here and stay at the same theta so that uh, theta is constant. Let's calculate what that would be. So this is the same as uh, it's moving in a circle, right? So I have a downward gravitational force mg. I have the normal force n. If this stays in a circle, a horizontal circle, then in the y direction, f net y, there's more than one way to do this, but I like this way. F net y is gonna be a component of the normal force, which is actually gonna be n sine theta minus mg equals zero. So n is gonna be equal to mg over sine theta. Now in the uh, x direction, the net force F net x is gonna be negative in this particular case in cosine theta, right? That's the projection there. And that's gonna be equal to the centripetal acceleration, which is pointed towards the center of the circle. So it's negative m omega squared times this distance r. But if, if this is r, then this is gonna be r cosine theta. So it's r cosine theta. Omega squared r is the angular acceleration. So now I can solve, if I put in for n, I can solve for theta. So let's put this in for n. I get uh, the negatives cancel. I get mg cosine theta over sine theta equals m omega squared 
R cosine theta. Did I do that wrong? In cosine, that's in cosine. That's theta. Oh, so this is, this is, I'm sorry, I got these backwards. So this is going to, this, this is theta. So this is cosine. Cosine. And that's sine. I, just, I did it backwards. Sine. Sine. This is very unprofessional mean. I should never do this. Okay, so the sine theta is canceled, the mass is canceled, and I and then I I get I'm going to divide this. So I get g over r omega squared equals cosine theta. Let's see, so that's the right units. Okay, so then cosine so theta equals the inverse cosine of g over r omega squared. I feel like I might have made an error, but let's go ahead. I'm going to calculate this theta, put it into my calculation, and see if it stays in a, in a path. It'll be kind of fun. And then I'll stop because it's over 30 minutes. And there's some magical rule in my head that I shouldn't go over 30 minutes, but I don't know what that is. Okay, so I have theta right there. Let's recalculate theta. Uh, let's just say theta equals the arc cosine of g, oh, I can't do it right there because I don't have omega. Let's put it right here. Theta equals arc cosine of g divided by r times omega squared. That should be fine. And it's not fine. Can't find the variable r. Well, whose fault is that? R. Hmm. Theta is a cosine g. Let's see if I get this out. Does that? Yeah, that's working. Um. R, G, G over R cosine. Let's print that. I think I'm getting a crazy number. Let's see. Print. This print theta. No, not a number. That's why. Okay. So G. I must have made a mistake. MG. Okay, I, I definitely want to do this. Okay, let's go back to the paper and do it again. I hate to do that, but sometimes you just got to do it again, right? I made that dumb mistake. Okay, so the, the F net is, that's true, right? Um, that's theta. If that's theta, then the Y component is this side. So it is, so N equals MG over cosine theta. That's true. Okay, now in the x direction, I have uh, n sine theta equals m omega squared r. Sine theta. Yeah. Right, and the sine theta is cancel. And then I get, uh, so I get the g's cancel. So I get g over cosine theta equals omega squared r. So cosine theta is that. You know, maybe it's just not spinning fast enough. No, it should be. So cosine theta is g over r omega squared. And I have, oh, here it is. Theta is arc cosine g over r omega squared. So that's 9.8, that's 0.3. So I just need, I need a, I guess it needs to rotate faster. What if I just go over here and, and increase my angular velocity to five? 
No. 5. Omega squared. G. Maybe. 9. Okay. It just wasn't rotating fast enough. That's all. There you go. Ha! That was dumb of me. Okay. Stable. Just like I said. Okay. So, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, you could make graphs of theta versus time. You could do the energy plot. Um, you could do a whole bunch of other things, but that's that. So, uh, code for this down below. Uh, my other look, I'll put a play link to my playlist for my other classical mechanics stuff. It's got a bunch of other Lagrangian things in there, but I hope that helps, and I will talk to you later.